You can listen to the Backward Compatible Podcast anytime, anywhere, and any way you like. Subscribe and listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Then, join the discussion. So you're saying that Sonic is now more for the casual market? I think, oh, I think Sonic's dead, but... <laughs> <laughs> this week on Backward Compatible, Layton and Rosalie Lucky stop by to talk about recent trends in gaming, including Amiibo and downloadable content plus. With reports that Sega may be moving away from consoles, we speculate about the fates of their biggest IPs. The Backward Compatible .com podcast starts right now. <laughs> Backward Compatible. Hello, Backward Compatible listeners, and welcome to podcast number 23. As always, I'm Chris, and in the building, like actually in the building, is Jim. Um, he got a new job, and now he's back in Dallas, so good to have you back, Jim. Yeah. Glad to be back. Welcome. And the other voices are a couple of guests of ours. We have um, Layton Lucky and Ro Lucky. So, guys, how about you introduce yourselves? My name is Layton Lucky. I am a game designer, student, graduate student at UTD. And, uh, yeah. I am Rosalie Lucky, husband to said late and lucky, and I am a Your wife. <laughs> oh snap! I am a wife. I'm a female husband. That's there I'll go. save that. Um, and I am a game guinea pig. So that's how I play into this conversation. Gotcha. So are you a uh, guinea pig for Layton's development? Then I guess all of them, awesome. without choice, <laughs> even the horrible ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are no horrible ones. They're right. all correct the right, first honey. time. But. Right, honey, they're all correct the first time. <laughs> so she always tells me. And even though there's no uh, video, I do uh, I do want to point out that Leighton is rocking the samurai look. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, As usual. Yeah, you kind of have this, like, Tom Cruise and Last Samurai kind of going, going on. White, white Asian guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, weren't you also um, Jesus over in the Philippines? or? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Constantly. Maybe if I let, I don't know. Strangers always asking for blessings. Very weird. <laughs> kind of surreal. <laughs> Awesome. Does that actually happen? I come up with this, like, hey, can you bless me? Because mm-hmm. you sort of look like some art that I saw that or like was supposed to be Jesus. White Jesus, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Or it's, take pictures with yeah. Yes. It's fun. He, mm-hmm. It was kind of a paparazzi wheel this time around. They're like, hey, hey, can we take a picture with your husband? I was like, uh, yes, I think. Sure. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so, Jim, I don't know if you had a particular topic we wanted to open up with just to kind of break the ice or whatever, but... Yeah, um, I, I think we can just go ahead and get right into the Nintendo-Sega discussion that we mentioned a little bit before. And I, um, you mentioned some news that we're taping a lot of talk with um, Sega possibly going exclusive PC, mm-hmm. uh, PC publisher, and possibly um, moving away from the console mm-hmm. space. Yeah, moving away from console, wow. moving to PC and or mobile. Um, which is an interesting um, interesting story. I guess they just haven't been as successful on consoles as they used to be. Um, yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Maybe it's because they don't have a console anymore. Yeah, that could be I part of it. I was to say the quality of the game. Or also, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, was tr- I was trying to think of like, the last good Sega game that came out. Mm-hmm. Well, which... Which games have they made recently? Because that's well, actually a good discussion, Well, what's interesting is too. actually what? um, whenever you see um, Sega on Steam, um, like this kind of like, you know, the Sega sale, the Sega collection, mm-hmm. it's things like, um, uh, what was it, um, Total War, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like Sonic. more simulations and stuff <laughs> like that, not like what their console properties are, yeah. Right. Um, and so I don't think any of this has been confirmed in any way, but you know, sort of the, the rumors flying around, the speculation flying around is that <laughs> with Sega leaving console space, they might actually sell off some of their properties to mm-hmm. other studios. Um, and one idea that some people have had, given that Sega and Nintendo have been kind of working together on Sonic recently, is that what if Nintendo bought Sonic? Yeah, because I mean... Um, they do have an exclusive agreement. I looked it up before mm. we started. Um, as of May of two years ago, 2013, mm. um, Nintendo has an exclusive agreement to use Sonic. So I think it probably came oh. about because they were already kind of using him in mm-hmm. some of their games, and they probably had individual, like, oh, let's use him for, you know, Olympic game, or right. let's use him mm-hmm. for, like, you know, Smash Brothers. And eventually they just kind of said, hey, let's just have an exclusive mm-hmm. agreement to just use him. And it was kind and of already I think there. It, I think it was specifically publication, um, and which, oh, yeah. of course, would yes, lead to correct, yes. being Wii consoles only. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still being developed and by Sega. Three, do they have a 3DS? Oh, I guess... 
Um, the, three, the, the Sonic Boom came out on 3DS. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so Sonic Lost Worlds was kind of like the first um, Wii U exclusive Sonic game that came out as part of this deal. Um, and then um, Sonic Boom came out, which was horrible. Um, Lost World apparently <laughs> wasn't too bad, according to some people. Well, um, actually, I heard some decent things about it. But Let's, let's do this, because I think this could be an interesting... Um, topic, mm-hmm. or icebreaker type topic, or game. I'm going to run down some of these Sonic series, or these Sega series, I should say, mm-hmm. and we're going to go around the table and we're just going to say either um, saved or dead. Like, the series is dead, or it's going to be saved by being picked up by another publisher. And if you want it saved, just tell me what publisher you think that you would like this them to purchase. Because they oh. actually have a lot of different series. I was going over the list, okay. and some of them are pretty well known. So, if, if you don't know it, that's cool. Mm-hmm. On a related note, um, with EA having the rights to Star Wars now, Criterion, make um, pod racers, please. That'd be <laughs> yes. so amazing. But anyway, back to that. That actually would be pretty cool. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I would like to see another pod, pod, pod racing from the makers of Burnout. I mean, yes, please. <laughs> that was, that was really a good thing to come out of Phantom Menace anyway. Well, that sounds great. The soundtrack Are they still making Burnout games? Um, I mean, just that I think not, not really, no, because the Burnout Studio is kind of also splintered a little bit, but they've been doing Need for Speed now, mm-hmm. um, in kind of a Burnout style. I liked crushing things. I did like yes. crushing things. Yes. Um, but on with the Sega. Mm, okay. Let me let me interject real quick. Sure. Okay, go for it. Um, I am actually a <laughs> heavily new gen quote unquote mm-hmm. gamer. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first system was a 360 so a lot of these oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of these IPs are probably going to be lost on me so awesome. just going to throw that out there before we start just actually it might not be bad to get your take on some of them because yeah. some of them might be very different from what a we remember very new yeah. age yeah, yeah cool, i agree cool. and, and some of these some of these series actually several of them have had re- relatively recent entries okay so you'll pro- you probably will recognize them but maybe not in the same sort of format or have as much of a okay. background with yeah. them, which is also cool I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about them unless i don't know in which case I'll try to figure it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, a few of these are not known to me. Okay, so let's let's start. Um, the biggest one, of course, Sonic. Mm-hmm. So I, I know I'll start with Chris, yes. and I, I think I know what he's going to say in terms of uh, saved or dead. But. Yeah. Um, if Nintendo gets it, and Nintendo actually pours its first party resources into Sonic, I think it can be saved, and I really want it to happen. <laughs> you want only first party? You don't want something like Retro, oh, well, which is technically they, well, second party. But. I, Nintendo second party, I think, is good enough still that I'd be cool with that. Mm-hmm. I just don't want it to be like Nintendo owns Sonic, but then leases it out to whatever third party wants to work on right. it. Um, so if it was something like Retro, I think Retro would do a great job with it. Um, Retro Studios, of course, having worked on Metroid Prime and Donkey Kong Country recently. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> So yeah, I think that you know Retro would be good with it. A few other second party developers, um, but anything Nintendo first party, second party, I think could be a good thing for Sonic. All right, bro. I'd have to agree. I think it would be saved, um, just because of the brand equity that it has. I mean, Sonic's a huge name. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, everyone knows even who Sonic you know is. Sonic. I know, right? <laughs> See, if I know who Sonic is, I mean, everyone's got to know it, right? Mm-hmm. Even even the little little babies out there in the world today. Um, Developer, that's a question that I cannot answer probably because I don't know enough developers to answer it. But I do believe mm-hmm. that because it's such a popular name, it's mm-hmm. it's got that history behind it. I feel like it won't necessarily be lost to history. So cool, cool. Layton, I'm gonna say dead. Whoa! <laughs> Get out. The <laughs> reason being, I think you could use the if Nintendo picked it up and poured their resources in it for like any game like yeah. maybe Superman mm-hmm. 64 and they're like remake Superman they're like alright it's awesome now um, <laughs> all I do rings is the most badass experience yeah, like, ever <laughs> Nintendo innovating um, <laughs> Sonic is rings. not fun <laughs> I said it um, <laughs> it's 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 too fast it doesn't make sense half the time mm. you're just kind of like I gotta hit the button oh, jump jump Sonic jump <laughs> and like that's that's really it that's Sonic in a nutshell. Um, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. I I'm think, not much of a puzzle I don't, person. I, don't, I think it's an old game that had its time, mm. and we've moved on. They're, mm. like, mechanically and just, like, mm-hmm. level design, aesthetically. Like, there's there's better things now. Would you say it's too extreme for you? It's too <laughs> extreme. You can't handle okay. the blast processing for, for anyone. <laughs> well, you can't handle the blast processing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go ahead and mirror what what y'all have been saying, except not, except Layton. Uh, well, I mean a little bit because I do agree that if Nintendo picks it up, um, that's who I'd like to see pick it up. I'm really not mm-hmm. that interested in seeing 
just anybody pick it up, and I don't really think that if Sega, especially if Sega is going to just go for PC and mobile, I have no interest in a mobile <laughs> Sonic game. I think it would be. I tried playing like one of the old ones on phone. Oh, th- this, and it's, it's impossible. Yeah. I'm just like I don't know what. It's terrible. Nope. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That, um, I, I think the reason that I'm hopeful about Nintendo in particular is that they've shown, like with Mario and other franchises, that they're good at taking a game that was known for its 2D mechanics and being able to translate it mm-hmm. either to modern 2D or to 3D spaces really well. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, I, I personally like. Um, Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast Mm -hmm. Um, but there are a lot of people I know who would argue that it it wasn't the greatest 2D to 3D translation ever whereas we've seen with Nintendo that Mario was able to translate very well into 3D because Mm -hmm. it's Nintendo essentially Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see Naughty Dog pick it up and make story (laughs) campaigns for Sonic (laughs) okay well let's let's go on to the next series um so there's a lot of different ones that are that are part of the Virtua series, which is their sort mm-hmm. of the Sega Sports. They kind of mm-hmm. had Virtua okay. Tennis and all that. But the biggest one, in my opinion, is Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Yep. So I'd like to ask, uh, go around the table and see what y'all think. If, has everyone played Virtua Fighter? It is, it is a, a, it a 3D bit. fighting game. Played it. It was sort of innovative at the time because it was kind of the first one to do that yep. 3D transition. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess this time let's start with uh, Layton. Let's okay. go the other way this time. I think that's another one that had its had its... Heyday. Mm. Um, I think the big selling point at the time, the only at the same year that Virtual Fighter came out, Mortal Kombat came out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They were, and the notable thing about Virtual Fighter was, oh, it's in 3D. Mm-hmm. You can't use that as a selling point anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I don't really know anything notable about that except for like its historical significance and being mm-hmm. uh, it, the first it arcade game. It was really big on the tournament scene. Um, I think it was either. Was it three or four that was, like, for, for years and years afterward, it was continued to play on the fighter tournament? Yeah. Scene. Um, so it does kind of have sort of a pedigree from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. But, of course, that doesn't matter if, if, you know, Sega's not really pouring the resources to make a new one or if whoever picks it up is terrible. So you right. could be right that it's maybe you said I don't know, like, the like if there's a fighting... Because like, I know a lot of the modern fighting games, like, they have different sort of styles that go along with playing each one of them, mm-hmm. tempos right. to each one and things like that. And I don't I don't know anything about that one because it's been gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's for it's mostly... Because I, I was never really that good at it, but um, it's kind of known for having a lot of... Um, a lot of complication, I guess. Mm. Because it's very. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of different like fighting moves that you can do. You can call and it, it technical. Yeah, it gets mm-hmm. really, really, really technical. Yeah, and um, it's that's really what it's known for is that if you're really good, there's so many different things you can pull off, hmm. and it's. I would say it's almost like the opposite of Smash Bros. Whereas mm-hmm. like Smash Bros. There's like a few moves. Mm-hmm. There's a few things to know, and it all comes down to you know timing and figuring out what you want to do. Whereas in in Virtual Fighter, it's all like knowledge and knowing exactly how to how to do this counter for this situation mm-hmm. and all these kind of... It, it just becomes so much more of a technical experience. Very steep mm-hmm. learning curve. Um, and, and maybe there's not a space for that right now. Mm-hmm. I, well, I'm so not knowledgeable enough to know if there is a game that's currently occupying that space. Mm-hmm. To my knowledge, I don't think so, but I'm not... Again, I'm not a huge fighter game right. so, uh, mm-hmm. player either. That's so. hard to say for me. But I think that if, if what you, I know of it, there's plenty out there. I don't see it making mm-hmm. a comeback or a dent in what's currently there. Right, okay. right. 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 I have never played it. Mm. Surprise. <laughs> um, but I think I'd have to agree with Layton that I don't think it would save it just because mm. I <laughs> haven't heard of it. Mm. But there's also a lot of big names in mm. the fighting game realm. Mm. There's Tekken. There's Mortal Kombat. Mm. Excited about Tekken. Um, there's Soul Calibur. Mm. And, Fighter. Right, yeah. Mm. And, like, Nintendo <laughs> has Smash. Mm. And so it's like, okay, it already has its fighting game. Why does it necessarily need another one? But mm. you said it is very technical so maybe that has an appeal to some people and, but not me <laughs> and not just nintendo it can be you can name any sort of oh okay comics, i see but you may not right. know the, the developers for, right, for those right. Sort of games anyway right mm-hmm. nope <laughs> uh chris um so yeah virtual fighter i think i'm gonna side with you guys i don't really think it's one that necessarily has a space um mm-hmm. the most recent thing i ever saw out of it was um they had a couple of characters featured as guests in dead or alive five oh, okay. um Mm. which um, was interesting. And it was interesting, too, because you can tell that their um, voices were actually just sampled from the Virtua Fighter series. <laughs> um, so, like, they had, like, this very sort of lossy sound compared Ooh. to all the other characters. Um, <laughs> I think, really, the only way that they would be popular again is if it got some of the characters, some of the more iconic ones, and there aren't many, um, at least not that I'm aware of, um, mm. get folded into another franchise. So something like Dead or Alive okay. or maybe Tekken. Because mm. um, like I do like to kind of have those mashups of different... Right. Um, 
yeah. fighter yeah. games like you know Street Fighter and SNK have had various mm. mashups. I know I think Street was a Street Fighter and Tekken that came together. It was Tekken. Um, and, Street, I think yeah, yeah Street Fighter and Tekken. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's various ones like that, that that like to have mashups, especially games that get released in Japan and then we never see them over here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean maybe they could do something like that in a more yeah. permanent sense. Like yeah. maybe because that's kind of what I was thinking is that I would only really want to see it if, it, if someone like. Maybe Capcom, but they're kind of moving away from it. Someone mm. like maybe SNK. Mm. Or who are SNK still technically independent at this point? Or are they kind of owned by? I'm not sure. I know that um, they've still been coming out with King of Fighter. So that's true. Um, um, yeah, SNK is another big one. They're mm-hmm. uh, another sort of like technical based um, fighter. Kind of like for they when they sort of came out, they were kind of known as like, oh, Street Fighter's too casual. And like <laughs> SNK is going to be more, you know, tricky. But they were 2D. So there's mm-hmm. and then Virtual Fighter was like the 3D right. sort of answer to like Mortal Kombat being. The, um, so that's in game. I all kind of transition to 3D at this point. You're right, like Mortal Kombat Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. If um, they did get picked up. I would assume that. I would mm-hmm. assume they're just being put into something. Yeah, and not mm-hmm. given a new game. Which would like, mm-hmm. I could see. Like you know, they could have some deal with. Um, I don't think mid. Who owns? Uh, is it Nether Realm that owns Mortal Kombat? Yeah, Kombat? yeah. Because mm-hmm. it used to be Midway, and now mm-hmm. it's Nether Realm. But someone owns Nether Realm, right? I'm not sure. I think they do. Well, regardless, <laughs> it doesn't. Matter. Um, I'm, okay, I'm kind of excited about Mortal Kombat 10. To be honest, I kind of. Mm-hmm. I've kind of become a fan. I liked um, like that the one where it was like DC versus Mortal Kombat. I actually really mm-hmm. enjoyed. I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of fun. The story mode for that. Yeah. Then they had the DC fighting game with it was mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat engine, which was I was sad. Surprisingly they had to, fun, actually. They, they had to water down the fatalities though for the DC crossover, and it's like, oh, that would have been so awesome. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, <laughs> so um, okay, so this next one, and I personally do think this is kind of a big series. Um, House of the Dead. Oh. It is. It, it was really known back in the day as an arcade yeah, sure. uh, shooter. You had your arcade. guns. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still it's, it's still in arcades. Um, <laughs> Those still are around. That we see, they're still huge in Japan. Yeah. So I mean, they're still making they're still making new ones, and you can still find arcades around. Well, even if it's not an arcade, it's just like any like, main event mm-hmm. shenanigans, yeah. mm-hmm. any place that has games to play, like, mm-hmm. usually has one of those stations. Mm-hmm. So. So what would you say about House of the Dead? you want to save it or you want to just kill it? So that's, You've been killing a lot of Sega Fox. <laughs> um, There's a reason they're going out of business. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not like, like, oh, I hate them. Um, <laughs> that's interesting because I don't know a terrible and lot amount of uh, arcades. I never grew up in arcades. The most experience I had was like you go to some place like Chuck E. Cheese and they have games there. Mm-hmm. Um, more adult ones would have things like House of the Dead. And I always enjoyed playing it, uh, but I don't know if that market is still big enough because I think if you did that that's what you're looking at you're looking at an arcade space and these are the, these are um, there have been home versions of them a yeah. lot of them actually and they sort of thrive on especially now that we have better um, motion control mm-hmm. like for example the Wii had a really good House of the Dead version I think it was called Overkill I don't know if y'all played it I think you're right yeah. where they went way over the top with the storyline and because it really fit the House of the Dead style you just, it's a zombie shooter for this yeah. no, no, first ridiculous version. and um, they <laughs> went you should play if you if you have a Wii or a Wii U mm-hmm. because it's really fun where they they basically make it sort of a real grindhouse um, mm-hmm. horror atmosphere, and the characters both curse a lot, but to the point where it's just absurd <laughs> on purpose, yeah. and it's actually pretty hilarious the way that they do. It's like it's like a, a B movie that's very yeah, aware. They're, they're like making that fun it's a of like seventy movie, right. movies. Right, it's, it's yeah, well done. And awesome. so maybe if they go in that style, and I don't that's know who that developer yeah. was, but I would say if they go in that style and kind of play up because there's so many shooters yeah. nowadays and a lot yeah. of zombie games. But if they mm-hmm. played up as you know, so many of them are going for that more realistic, you know, Walking Dead style. Right. If they move away from that and, and play up the campiness and the silliness, I, that would give them something unique. Yeah. I mean, so I would say save if that's if, if they're going that direction. I think for me, that doesn't be my the logistical call. issue of to play House of the Dead, you need a peripheral. And yes, it needs to either be that's the true. guns, that is with true. the arcade thing, or something like a Wiimote. And PlayStation has basically dropped Move. Mm-hmm. Um, Xbox has Connect, which you could do something, but I want to hold it in my hand, yeah. so that doesn't really work. And then you can use Wiimotes with the Wii U. Mm-hmm. So I don't and see there it. is a PC version too that uses mouse and keyboard, and that's but that kind of kills it. Typing up the like, deck, yeah, typing, yeah, up, well, the typing up the head is awesome. Typing up the head is awesome. <laughs> Let's, that was originally on Dreamcast, yeah. and I would say that's it's a, a great fantastic game. game. And, and they I actually could, have that's typing part of the dead overkill. Yeah, what? So that's how I know about okay. overkill. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I didn't know they had an overkill version. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I got to get that version now. I would like to try this. Please. I'm getting this version probably tonight. But but again, that's on that's on PC though, and that's another thing where it's like it's a Sega property that's been thriving on PC. Well, I'm Thriving, huh. but right. so then working existing. on existing on PC. They may not sell it, then they may decide. Especially if they're if they're saying they want to stay PC and mobile. Maybe they're including arcade in that too. And mm. the arcade market in Japan is still thriving. Mm. So they might think, hey, we can keep House of the Dead going as an arcade too in Japan, and then just have PC mm. versions. Mm. 
Especially since it mm-hmm. is an FPS, so maybe they... I mean, it is on Rails, but... Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so that's something. I mean, do you all have a different thoughts on how no, that that's that basically my thought, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. so, uh, Chris, you might be a little more aware of the series. I don't know how aware all of y'all are, but uh, the Fantasy Star series of RPGs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what? we'll start with you this time. <laughs> all right, so... What do you think about saving this one? And if so, who should mm-hmm. get it? I think... I'd like to see it saved because it's a very cool game, and I think that it's still fairly unique as RPGs go, MMO specifically, because it had, um, even back on the Dreamcast when it first came out, it felt more action-y than a lot of other MMOs. Um, and you mean you mean the MMO version first came out, right? Because it yeah. started on the... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it started on the... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. There, there was Fantasy Star, and then there's Fantasy Star Online. Yeah, but um, the whole series, we're talking about the whole series, so... Right, right. Um... Actually, now that you mentioned the old Fantasy Star games, it'd kind of be interesting to see um, Square Enix pick that up. Oh, really? Um, Are you satisfied with modern Square Enix games? <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Um, I'm I'm encouraged by what I've been seeing out of fifteen um, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy fifteen. Um, so I think that if you got um, maybe Square Enix, maybe there are a couple others that aren't coming to mind. Um, Atlas might be kind of cool, actually, um, if they were to do it. What about um, Mistwalker? I'm remind me who what they've done. Um, that's where Sakaguchi went after leaving Final Fantasy. Oh, like right, yeah. Games. And they've done... That could um, be interesting, too, yeah. They did Lost Odyssey, which mm-hmm. I actually really enjoyed. And mm-hmm. what was that other one with the... Blue Dragon. They mm-hmm. did Blue Dragon. They're, they've done um, Last Story, mm-hmm. a few games like that. So there's, yeah. they're still kind of like um, a smaller company, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I think what I'd like to see happen is I don't think that it would necessarily take off as a pure MMO anymore. Um, I'd like to see it where they kind of have a MMO option, but still kind of like local multiplayer or single player ability mm-hmm. um, like they had in Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 and 3 and I think 4 technically all that was only on PC um, I'm not sure necessarily who would develop it but that's one of those series that I think could be saved if it got on the right hands mm-hmm. um, right now though it's kind of been I think at one point they were actually working on a new Fantasy Star game that never got published and hasn't been talked about for like a year or more now and there's actually fan run servers that are actually running it right now but like nobody's heard of them so I have actually I kind of remember hearing about that too mm-hmm. that's interesting do y'all have any have y'all played Fantasy Star or I, I played the online one briefly mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, what I thought when I first played it I didn't really know anything about consoles I just kind of thought oh this is a game and you can play games anywhere mm-hmm. um, so when I, I was like oh you can play with people on the console, mm. that, that's really cool. You don't have to be on a computer. Um, I want to do that on my Game Boy, mm. and I, I obviously didn't realize that you know, there's not yeah. a thing for that. <laughs> it's actually far more complex than that. But if I don't know how you would go about it, but I would love to see some kind of MMO like that because they, they sort of were pioneering that in consoles mm. to pioneer that in handheld. Mm. Um, so if ahead. it was kind of almost like a Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter for 3DS, both yeah. Fantasy Star that you can connect online, right? So like That'd something cool. like that. Um, and going back to Nintendo, I think that would be the handheld people. Mm. Did I read uh, somewhere that Nintendo has opened itself up to the mobile market, or it plans to? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. imagine that. Yeah, okay. that, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's totally legit, totally okay. official. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to... Um, they have another developer they're working with that is going to actually develop okay, the games and for the mobile market. They're not just going to port Mario, which I don't think would work anyway, right. to a phone. I know yeah. some people were excited about that, which why? I don't know why. You can already <laughs> play it on any others. Yeah. Why would you? And, and right, it's you need so a controller hard. anyway. You yeah. need your <laughs> buttons. And that, yeah. that's like what I'm encouraged by is that they've actually come out and said that they're developing for mobile. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's taking advantage of mobile platforms. So I'm actually interested to see what Nintendo can do in that space um, without oh. hopefully doing the uh, Pokemon Shuffle style thing where it's <laughs> just <laughs> just a reskin of one of those like little jewel puzzlers. Candy Crush. Yeah. But you older. Candy, yeah. Candy Crush, yeah. basically. <laughs> Yeah. So. Um, okay, so this next series is newer, so perhaps uh, you better play this, Ro. <laughs> Have you played Va- Valkyria Chronicles or heard of it? Oh, I love Valkyria Chronicles, uh, yes. I, I heard of it, <laughs> and I've seen a lot of screen caps. Okay. Is it coming or on the 3DS? Um, it was, no. It, no. It was on the Wii. The PlayStation 3. Okay, PlayStation what am I thinking 3. of? Yeah. And Windows. It's on Windows. You can buy it on Steam. Okay. It's on Steam now. There yeah. we go. That's okay. It's on yeah. Steam now, and it was originally on the PlayStation 3, and there has been a sequel. Yeah, yeah. and so, a, lot um, of, a lot of my friends The sequel came out. Yeah. It. Yeah. It, it's a tactical RPG. For, in oh, case you don't okay. know, so if you played yeah. like, for example, Fire Emblem, Love Fire uh, this one, this one mixes that and with um, shooting. Games. It mixes that with like a, a, a shooter. Cool. So it's a mixture of an, a tactical role playing game and a shooter. Mm-hmm. But um, hmm. it is sort of if you're into that sort of tactical yeah. uh, role playing. Yeah, I really, really want to play that. I just haven't had time. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is amazing. <laughs> I may own it. But. So you might actually just want to save this. Game. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I was, yeah, sure. I, don't know. Um, I just love tactics games. You know like, who I'd love to see take that um, would be Intelligent Systems, the guys who do Fire yes. Emblem, because right. they're working on code names. 
course Wii, which is, is a lot like right. which of Valkyria course is owned by Nintendo. Yeah, of yeah. course, <laughs> it's one of the Nintendo um, first party. So yeah, if uh, Valkyria Chronicles be- became ostensibly a Nintendo property. I would probably lose my mind. And I, I, I love Fire Emblem and have, have for quite a while. So yeah, I, I'm totally on board with that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles, I think, is um, um, definitely worth saving. The the second one came out on PSP in the US, and I think there was another PSP sequel that was Japan only. Um, oh, really? So I think that after the first one, maybe the second one. Was I think, it P or Vita that it came out on? Was it PSP? I think it was PSP. I don't think there's been a Vita version, uh, mm-hmm. but I could. I, I should probably. If you had, if so, in, if Intelligent Systems picked it up. Mm. Um, they could have a great crossover, I feel like, between Valkyria, that, how is it again? Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles. And Advanced Wars. Because mm-hmm. um, oh, they're already Wars, both war games. Yes. Yeah. There hasn't been another and Advanced Wars in a while either, since, which kind of annoys me. <laughs> yeah, they had to, uh, last one was on the regular DS. Mm-hmm. They have not had a 3DS one yet. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe tomorrow that's what they're announcing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> And they already have had. There's there's some precedent for that because they had the um, SMT Fire Emblem mm-hmm. crossover. They've actually been doing a lot of crossovers lately. Yeah, which is interesting. And SMT is not owned by Nintendo, so it's mm-hmm. interesting oh. if they have that. They did that crossover with a different company. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, next series, um, Shinobi. And this one's actually mm-hmm. been had some recent releases as well. I've okay. heard of Shinobi. I haven't played it. Yeah. Um, it's Same. it's in more of an actiony um, actiony ninja game. Uh, oh, okay. You kind of you kind of run around and you know you're this ninja dude and you kill a bunch of people essentially. And it's just like it's a straight up old style action game. It was what it was originally. Um, yeah, the most recent release. That's what I thought. Okay, so yeah, it had it had a 3ds release. Uh, it was actually oh, four years ago, so it was more than I thought. Hmm. But I knew it did have a recent release. Um, there are a lot of ninja games though that are currently kind of going around. I know one that I played recently, which I really enjoyed, was uh, the new Strider. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone played that. I know Chris did, because we played it for the right, podcast. Right. <laughs> which was from Capcom, right? Um, it might have been. I think I think so. Yeah. It was for one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think that Capcom actually developed it, though. I think they outsourced it to mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they did, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's essentially just a 2D action game uh, with 2D platform, action platformer. You're a ninja. Yeah. There's a lot of those, like in the vein of something like Ninja Gaiden or Strider. Okay. I mean, you could give it to Team Ninja, but they've already got Ninja that, Gaiden. That's, so. that's the <laughs> issue. If, right? if I had so to name Ninja games, Ninja Gaiden and Shinobi, which I'm not familiar with, I just know the name. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, is is like the ninja games that come to mind, and that one that. I mean, if you if you played Strider, you'd probably know it because Strider is also mm. um, he's appeared in other games too. Like he's been in certain fighters, like crossover games. Marvel okay. versus Capcom. I, I yeah, like Marvel guys. versus Capcom. Oh, have you played Marvel versus Capcom? Yeah, he's in there as one okay. of the ninja characters. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, so it's I would I would actually kill that this one to be honest with you yeah. because I just don't think there's enough space for that many mm-hmm. ninja games. It's like ninjas used to be. At a certain time, they were really, really popular, and everyone wanted mm-hmm. to make ninja games. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how now everybody wants to do zombies. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, if they did maybe like a zombie ninja game, I could get behind it. <laughs> but... Shinobi undead. <laughs> that would be pretty cool, actually. I think any of these that have any kind of iconic character, I could easily see like them picking it up for the purpose of not making a game about it, but inserting it into mm-hmm. X franchise. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Nintendo could possibly pick all of these up and just throw them into like a Smash Bros, <laughs> yeah. which would seem kind of, or like a, or maybe a mixture like a um, Smash X Sonic or something, and then or X uh, Sega, if they wanted to. Um, it should be interesting because they see, do have that engine. It'd be interesting to see Mario versus Sonic in not the context of the Olympics. Mario versus Sonic as like a platformer sort of game, or even a fighter. Maybe like a two-player game where one person plays as Mario and then plays as Sonic, and they have to complete the level. I feel like they would faster. never mix the core elements mm-hmm. of the games. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's why they were like, okay, we'll do the Olympic game and they'll be doing Olympic stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not Mario's. Well, stuff what I find hilarious Sonic's. about that is that like you know, Sonic is always gonna win in a foot race, right? Yeah. So why is it even a competition? Yeah. <laughs> because, because Mario has killed the sun. And when you've killed the sun, you can pretty much do anything. Okay. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm making a Super Mario Bros. 3 run. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I, maybe they just, like, um, <laughs> hamstrung all the Sonic characters before they let them race just to, you know, make sure they... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure like, that, I'm sure that was, <laughs> I do remember that being, like, my first thought. <laughs> that seems unfair. Mario has pasta power, so <laughs> go, go figure it out. <laughs> um, okay, so we're not, we're not going to do, actually... Um, we may not do all these series because there's several here, but um, Yakuza... 
This is also one that's had kind of uh, some new so that, entries right now. It's, it's yeah. sort of an open world. Um, it's the really big in Japan. That? I'm looking it up right now. PS, and very recently, PS4. Four, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the last release, okay, it, it's actually only started in 2005, so it's not even that old of a series. Mm-hmm. The last release was um, last month, uh, March. I don't know. What month is it right now? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> earlier in this month, month, so March 12th, yeah. there was a release in Japan. Only in Japan, yeah. Right. It's, it's really big in Japan. Yeah, it's really popular, and I remember uh, the first one that came out for the PS2. Great. Uh, it may have been PS1. I remember the one for the PS2 was very popular and well received. Yeah, it was PS2. Um, yeah. I think it had the issue of being overshadowed, though, by Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. And um, well, this is the like Chinese a... one. Uh, Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs. Yeah. And then, I don't, I don't know if anyone here has sort of, that's probably why it hasn't. No, I have played both you know, of those. I, it, I, love, it here. I love GTA. Well, I, mean, I love I, Sleeping Dogs. That's why I don't think uh, Yakuza has necessarily... It continued to it has a like small fan base here, yeah. and honestly, I think it's kind of for me it's a little bit odd that I have to admit I haven't played them, mm-hmm. and I'm a really big fan of open world games, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and maybe part of it is just availability because you know I have a PS2, but by the time I found out about them, you know I kind of already moved on, mm-hmm. never really got a PS3, and I went the Xbox route, so mm-hmm. I haven't really had much of a chance to play mm-hmm. them. For me, this falls into the uh, Shinobi category of I've definitely heard of the franchise, but I've never played it, and so I can't really judge one way or the other, mm-hmm. you know, whether I think it would be worth keeping or not. Um, it seems that, like between those two, Shinobi and Yakuza, Yakuza would probably be the more likely to survive, um, just because it's got a very sort of um, iconic theme to it, you know, mm-hmm. um, being kind of like the Japanese take on these crime open world games. I'm yeah. not even sure if it's open world technically. Um, do you guys know about that? It is. I think it is. Sure. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, action, like action. I think at the time it yeah, was open compared world. to a worse Grand Theft Auto, and mm-hmm. I think that's if they tried to do that, mm-hmm. and that's probably, I don't know if it's going to see an American release, the mm-hmm. one, um, but I wouldn't suspect that it does. That, that might it's also be one of those. It's one with yeah, American I release. think that's, if they keep it, it's going to stay in Japan. No, mm-hmm. what is, oh. I could also see it being kept on PC, too. Yeah. That's true. One of those properties that they don't sell off, but they keep for the PC. It's, it's going to be released for the... Um, in Taiwan. Oh, so, wow. and, and so there we go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's one of those things where maybe they just don't even see the money in releasing it because they don't want to bother competing with GTA. Yeah. And it is kind of just, you know, what if you were in Japan and you were going to be this gangster? Well, you, they're all they associate, you know, crime and gangsters with Yakuza, so they just thought, hey, let's just do this. But how are you going to compete with Rockstar's? Got such a at this point, they have such kind of a stranglehold on that market you really mm-hmm. have to try hard to differentiate yourself they got a budget <laughs> oh yeah because they made so much money exactly so and they do a good job too so it's not like yeah and right, that's so. it's kind of why compete why lose money on that mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but as we said they might actually keep that series mm-hmm. um okay so super monkey ball hmm. uh right um, it's a puzzle series. If you don't know, it's like essentially you're Super you're hard. you're like yeah you're trying to like control this sort of like ball with like you know you can balance balance on top of it or balance the side of it. You you like, can I, move I the up. level. Yeah, yeah, you move the level, and it's kind of like one of those games where you have a ball and you're trying to roll yeah. it into the hole. Uh, except you're usually trying to avoid the holes in this game. And when did this? I know there was the GameCube version which I played a mm. long time there ago. There was a recent one, wasn't there? Probably. I'm looking it up right now. Um, the, Either we or we use. Oh, it, it started on the arcade actually, but then it went to GameCube. Oh, and Engage, the Engage. Oh, <laughs> um, can't forget the Engage. Some, somewhere, somewhere is really happy. We you said know what? Engage. They're, they're keeping this. Uh, Nokia, the, the few Nokia employees. Are they still mm-hmm. even a company? Nokia. I think yeah, so. they, 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 they made. Uh, oh, okay. They made one of the new. Microsoft oh, the Windows Phone. Phones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so you're right. There has been new new games in it. Actually, they made one for the Vita. They yeah. made one for the 3DS. There we go, 3DS. They made so. one for the Android and the iOS. So they're probably going to keep huh. this and put it mm-hmm. on mobile. I think that's a great mobile yeah, game. Yeah, mobile game. Yeah. Um, if not mobile, then it could work well with <laughs> Nintendo, I think. But mm-hmm. it, it probably is one we'll hang on to as a mobile. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it's kind of a fun... At least when I played the GameCube one, I, I enjoyed it. But didn't really leave a lasting impression, to be honest. Um, have y'all played the Shining series? It's a, oh, it's, a like, uh, it's an action RPG. It's kind of like Fire Emblem ish. Oh. No, no, it's it's more like, like Zelda a... actually, but yeah. not quite. It's it's oh, right, it's an right, action right. RPG. Actually, it's more like um, Tales. Secret of Mana. It's okay. a lot like Secret of Mana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Tales is yeah, it's like is, more, it's, is sort of it's a little yeah. It's I was a little more like of Secret of Mana. Shining Force then, which 
It's part of the same series. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the tactical spinoff of it. It is a, it is a spinoff of okay. it, yes. So all of that, yeah, under the same umbrella, I mm. guess, the Shining series. And it's another one that has a really big presence in Japan, mm. more so than it does here. But they ha- we have actually seen a lot of those releases here mm. in the States. I've played several of them. Um, I have not really played much of the Shining Force series, but I've played a lot of the mainline games. Mm. Um, let's see when the last one was that came out. I think a lot of these that have, like, Japan presence... Um, just like Japanese business mentality, I think they're like, oh, okay, we're fine. Mm-hmm. People in Japan still like us, so yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna keep these guys. Yeah. Um, which isn't, you know, I think they're slowly realizing that's not a model that survives mm-hmm. in the global market. <laughs> they they came out um, late last year in November with another shining game for the oh. PlayStation Three. For that's some weird. reason, but yeah, I mean they they have <laughs> they've had, produce, I mean basically why. every year they're releasing a shining game almost like I'm scrolling down, uh, except they haven't re- this year, but it's still pretty early in the year. Yeah. They're, they're releasing them for arcade. Um, there was a Shining Force game for the arcade, Shining Arc for the PSP. I mean a lot of these are um, look like they're probably Japanese only releases because I don't even have a link to the game itself. <laughs> but I mean Shining Arc for the PSP I believe was also in the U.S. That can, be, guess, that can be one of those properties that goes oh, no, to a Square like, Enix or yeah. Square Enix like. If it's actually profitable, or if they're just chugging these out, mm. that would yeah, <laughs> someone might be interested. Mm. Well, we're getting to the end here because I don't want to talk about some of these unless y'all have heard of <laughs> Sakura Wars. Uh, I've heard heard of it, but yeah. very very little. So. Um, but the Puyo Puyo series is definitely one I would think they're going to keep because it is mobile. That's the yeah, last it's one an, that's another good discuss. mobile one. Yeah, um, it's a puzzle game, yep. and so those kind of work on the mobile platforms. Mm-hmm. Sonic Team, incidentally. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason for them to even get rid of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I could see Sega just becoming a mobile company. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what they're pushing right now is for PC and mobile. But yeah. but as we've said, some of their some of their properties wouldn't really work that well in that space, which is why we kind of went some over. of the properties as they exist, but adapting them to mm-hmm. just use the name brand, just mm-hmm. leverage that. I like think. there's a um, there's a game called Sonic Dash, I think it is on mm-hmm. mobile. That's basically like mm-hmm. the. Uh, the um, I'm trying to think of the other ones that do this, but like basically have three lanes. You're trying to avoid obstacles mm-hmm. running yeah. forward. Temple Runner style. Yeah. Temple Runner. Yeah. Um, where they basically just have those mechanics, but with Sonic. Right. Um, um, but that's you know not really a Sonic game. It's, it's just, not a Sonic game, but <laughs> just because of that, mm-hmm. and the hardest part about the mobile market is getting just getting mm-hmm. through all the other yeah. crap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's a huge advantage. The, the name recognition, the name Sonic, mm-hmm. in front of your game. Yes. So. Well, is it a huge advantage now, though, in 2015, or is it more like a poison brand? Versus, <laughs> well, that, that depends who you're targeting. I think the people who are like, "Oh, they killed Sonic," are I'm not trying to pick on. I'm trying to get Chris Rolls over here. They'll uh, get riled up easily. That's probably not the people who play the casual games. So I think those are okay. two different audiences. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you're saying that Sonic is now more for the casual market? I think. Well, I think Sonic's dead, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would argue that probably the people now who like Sonic for Sonic is because they are casual gamers that mm. like you know kind of like the Sonic spinoffs and yeah they probably like the racing game and mm. they they're familiar with the name that's the biggest yeah thing. Sonic thing. Boom is one of those games it's like like there are a lot of Sonic games that like you know implicitly Sonic's become a kiddie brand over the years mm-hmm. but I think that Sonic Boom was one where it's pretty obvious they're targeting a younger audience mm-hmm. than an older one or like kind of a universal audience. Um, and then, of course, whenever they try to make a Sonic that tries to appeal to a universal audience, then we get Sonic 06, and that never ends well. <laughs> so Maybe we see a, a Sonic go the way of Spyro and just, like, oh. something completely else, but, like, it worked yeah. uh, with Skylanders and stuff. Maybe. Um, terribly ugly Spyro. <laughs> uh, yeah. they, did, they did release those redesigns of Sonic when he has, like, really long legs. And, but that was not well received. <laughs> that, was for, that was for Boom, wasn't it? With the long legs. Um, Boom had that. That was like a, and like the bandanas. They they made knuckles. <laughs> yeah, the bandanas. Were, those are so cool. Because they go faster. In 2015, <laughs> bandanas were the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, like they have like this whole thing where like they have like this whole energy lasso deal. It's kind of mm-hmm. like everyone has one, so that's kind of supposed to be a trademark, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, yeah. They made Knuckles complete buffoon, which is like, ah, no, you killed my favorite character. Um, so, but it's maybe not. They, <laughs> they, maybe, they, maybe they tried the redesign. Thing, um, yeah. There, there was um, Sonic Riders, which had a bit of a different style too. And mm-hmm. It was kind of a racing game where they were yeah. on these like air hoverboards. I heard that was kind of good. I actually kind of liked it. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, it's not necessarily a Sonic game, but I thought it was a neat hmm. new racing game. Well, it's like it's like saying is Mario Kart not yeah. a Mario game? True, I mean, true. it's not a Super Mario Brothers game, mm-hmm. but it's Mario. It's a, game. It's a Mario mm. spinoff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. The, the racing spinoff thing is very popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sonic and, and Sega Sega's racing. already done that though. So mm-hmm. right, yeah, Sega All Star Racing as mm-hmm. well. They'll they need to find that. a new new trick. <laughs> 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 They're kind of running out of like. This is our IP, and they, they're using up a lot of the. This is our spinoff racing. Well, because the funny thing, the funny thing about yeah. Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing was that, you know, in the same way that Mario Kart has like Mario characters, and then there's kind of a few other characters thrown in that are related to Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sonic and Sega, it's like Sonic really was the only truly iconic character in there, and there are other characters you'll recognize if you've been playing Sega games for a while. But for the most part, it's kind of like, who are you? What are you from? <laughs> you know, like they they don't have the same iconicness as like a Nintendo lineup. What? Would. Racing game incorporated TF2 characters. Uh, I, I heard about this. I'm trying to remember. Probably which. something with like probably some Sony, PlayStation like play, PlayStation racers, PlayStation ripoff Nintendo idea once again. I, I did. Like, I did hear about like they this. did which with their, with yeah. their like Smash Brothers ripoff, and then people mm-hmm. just ripped on it. I don't know what that one's called, but yeah, like, I'm it up. Sony fighters. <laughs> I don't know. That, yeah, but yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Actually, like it, I, it had to be because Sony kind of has a tendency to do that. I don't, I don't know why they should just be themselves. Be Sony. <laughs> Have confidence in yourself, Sony. <laughs> oh no, it was uh, Sonic All Star Racing. Okay, oh, that's, that's <laughs> why I remember that. Okay, well there we go. So they was, it was <laughs> two characters. Because I've, I've only played Transformed, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't see them. So I've even played that game. I think that shows the limited. <laughs> yeah. Of, uh, yeah, the Sonic brand. <laughs> yeah. But they could have like zombie number one and zombie number two and three and four from Mouse yeah. the Dead, and that would be good enough. <laughs> sure. So, like, this is a sort of weird train of thought. So, follow me here for a second. Mm-hmm. But I was reminded with the TF2 feature in that of um, Poker Night at the inventory, yeah. which the Telltale crossover, mm-hmm. which then got me thinking about the second version where they had Claptrap in it, and I was thinking it'd be cool if we had a Borderlands racing game. Mm-hmm. Now. Kind of like a death rally sort of thing. So why don't you catch everybody up in case (laughs) they're not aware of what you're talking about? Um, Poker Night and all that, because okay, so, everyone's belated. Uh, Telltale Games, the people who have been recently known for um, the Walking Dead series, all these episodics, like um, Tales from the Borderlands recently, which is awesome, mm-hmm. Game of Thrones, which has been really good. Um, a while Wolf back, they, yeah, The Wolf Among Us mm-hmm. was also very good. Um, a while back, they did a couple of games that was called Poker Night at the Inventory, which is basically you take these iconic video game and or other characters, and they sort of threw them together, and you just have them... Um, basically doing witty banter back and forth while they play poker. Um, so it's pretty much just a straight up poker game, um, single player. Um, but it, you have some of these kind of cool moments with these characters, you know, saying funny things while you're playing. Um, so I found it enjoyable. It's kind of a, as far as poker games go, I got into it because it's with characters that I recognize and everything. So right. I learned how uh, Texas Hold'em works based on that. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Late. <laughs> Please silence your cell phones. Now. Yeah. I uh, we could we could mention that I know we have the we talked a little bit before we started about the um, amiibos and how that's kind of taken off mm-hmm. and you mentioned Skylanders already mm-hmm. so yeah, all those I, I know Dis- Disney had their, their mm-hmm. Disney Infinity yeah. um, which is also incorporating Marvel and I'm pretty sure Star Wars just because Disney owns Star Wars and they're probably pushing Disney. all that now mm-hmm. um, but I know those have taken off in terms mm-hmm. as well the Disney Infinity stuff has sort of taken off on these even though they're the same line they're taking off on these two different markets you've got. You know the people that are really into the Disney products, and they buy their their little you know characters. And you mm-hmm. have people that are you know into the Marvel stuff, and they buy theirs. And some buy both. And right. uh, have you mm-hmm. bought? Do you look at any? Because you're shaking your head a lot. So I'm wondering if you've ever bought <laughs> I, some of these or I haven't some of these found or? the ap- not necessarily the owning appeal of it, mm-hmm. but I support everything Disney because I've sold my soul to Disney. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely something that has interested me. But I just don't. I'd rather spend my money on, like, Dragon Age DLC and mm-hmm. things like that. So, that's not necessarily... Well, I know yeah. Layton's bought some Amiibos, right? Yeah. So, those are yes, I mean, sa- in the same vein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I definitely I definitely see the appeal of, like, this is my favorite character, now I'm a figure of it. Right. Because um, I don't know how many, like, <laughs> officially licensed Nintendo, like, figurines there are out there. Mm-hmm. Or they're really, like, weird-looking. These are these are pretty nice quality, and you, you can use it in a game, which yeah. I've, I've that, used it, but that was really cool. secondary mm-hmm. to... I wanted a Kirby statue. Um, <laughs> but, like, like yeah. the Star Wars thing, um, 
which you mentioned, and I thought about that before when they mentioned that all that together. As we approach like the release of the new movie, I would be shocked if they do not That's start true. rolling out um, old figures, new figures, That's true. Movie, yeah. and just making bank. Yeah. Oh, they yes. that's, that's why they spent like a billion dollars on Star yeah. Wars because they know that yeah. it is a property the that market, like, is huge. Yeah. And oh, all yeah. they have to do is just not give it to an incompetent director as in don't just yeah. don't let Lucas just make continue an okay to make his own movie. movies because <laughs> he can't do it anymore apparently. <laughs> and you'll probably be okay. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've heard some good things. I mean, there's so much hush-hush stuff around um, you know the new Star Wars film yeah. coming out with JJ, and I'm not I a JJ Abrams fan. Oh, I love him. Personally. I hate him. I <laughs> we, hate we've him. had this discussion before. I hate him. <laughs> I think he he ruined Star Trek, but the reason that he ruined Star yeah, Trek yeah. is because uh, he he is a big Star Wars fan, and he made it a little bit more like Star Wars, right? Which is which is which is great for a Star Wars movie. So I mm-hmm. am kind of excited about to see how he sort of you mm-hmm. know his take on Star Wars, mm-hmm. especially because there's no room for that. Um, I'm going to give you this mystery and all this kind of stuff that he likes to do with like Lost and Fringe but I didn't really think worked that well mm-hmm. in my opinion just for that's for me I know some people really got into him um, but everything that I've heard from people that, and of course they're being so cryptic with NDAs <laughs> but stuff that they've seen of, of you know Star Wars and going on the set and looking at you know some stuff like because he's building sets like he built like the Millennium Falcon for the movie like physically built it mm-hmm. he's not going the, the green screen route that Lucas did for the for the sequels he's going back to the roots of building sets and building models and trying to you know make make the Star Wars universe come alive again which I think is fantastic yeah it's yeah. like if there was any franchise you could like justify spending a ton of money on like you know just no expenses spared to make all these awesome sets and everything it'd be Star mm-hmm. Wars because right. it's so mm-hmm. iconic so I think it is cool to go back to practical um, effects and practical filming. So, mm-hmm. I think going back to the figuring thing, mm-hmm. one thing that uh, so Skylanders was sort of the first thing that like took off, mm-hmm. and that was uh, within its own game universe, and they had the whole uh, collectible thing. Some are rare; you can resell them. Blah blah blah. Um, and then there there is just the sheer on the Disney side, like marketing value of their characters. Yeah. Um, and then they have their game, but the one thing that I feel like Nintendo hasn't done. And it's the one thing that they can do that the other two can't necessarily, is that uh, you can have such like cross uh, integration with all of your first party games because like they mainly make first party games mm-hmm. for the Wii U, and they've had it like just so little like they could really push that yeah, they have, idea. Yeah, they they kind of have nominally like little things yeah. like unlocking skins or like even Hyrule Warriors. It's like it's compatible with your amiibo, but all it does is once a day per amiibo lets you get some random item. Yeah, yeah and so like <laughs> it's like that's. Okay, but like, you you gave me this thing, mm-hmm. and you can do cool stuff with it, mm-hmm. but you're not actually doing it in the software, and that's that's. I think if they they could destroy the other two mm-hmm. if they manage to do that correctly, but they're they're withholding really hard mm-hmm. on that. I mean, even if it was something like. Um you know, and say like a new Kirby game that comes out, you can put an amiibo in there. I, f- I think there is some interesting functionality. I forget what it was exactly, but I'd love it to be like you put your Mario amiibo on Kirby, and all of a sudden you get the Mario hat, and you have some cool, some sort of cool like Mario style mm-hmm. thing that Kirby yeah. can do now. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, kind of the same way you can in uh, Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. And especially with the functionality that they can store information, um, that's not really being used. Mm-hmm. Outside of Smash, like outside of Smash, it doesn't matter that I can store info in it, mm-hmm. and that's another thing that I feel like you can make these items personal to a person, mm-hmm. and they're not doing that yet. Yeah, um, and if they can, then they'll have a lot more money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that they can kind of do something that I think the PlayStation Three tried like at launch, and it was this. Um, card game where you had physical cards and you basically scan them into the game in order to play them in the game. Oh, and it was kind of a cool idea. The 3DS but, it has that. Yeah, they have something kind of like that. Yeah. So I think if like even Amiibo started to see something along those lines where you can kind of collect these figurines and have them you know, have kind of practical abilities and you, like, you level them up and stuff like that over time. Yeah. Um, I think if, if they were to do a Pokemon game where you actually collect Pokemon Amiibo and train them up that way. You can actually bring your Pokemon with you to a friend's house and battle them that way. Yeah. Why um, haven't they done that yet, that's, by the way? Because yeah. that's what the physically, first thing physically, physically <laughs> collect Pokemon. That would be incredible. You can literally collect them all, yeah. not just in your, yeah. your virtual space. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to see an actual Amiibo title, because the success mm-hmm. of the other two was games that revolved around them. Yeah. And these are just, you have this thing and it's secondary to the game. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, they haven't done a specifically for mm-hmm. their stuff, which would be nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the Pokemon thing, that was like everyone's first thought. I was like, oh, okay. You, got, they, you, just, you just got all my money. <laughs> <laughs> my, my guess is that because the Amiibos are still pretty a pretty new 
concept. Like they're still not they haven't been out for that long. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, in terms of products. And I'm thinking that, that Nintendo is going to release Pokemon, but they didn't want to release them all at the same time because then you, you would kind of split your audience base. Right. But if you would just kind of release them in stages, it's the same reason why Nintendo doesn't release every single ga- game in their catalog for you know the virtual library, virtual console at the same time. Because then you yeah. just split your base. Yeah. People will buy like, oh, I kind of want this one, but I'm just, I only have so much money right now, and then they forget what's on there. Right. If you just release them in stages, then it becomes, oh, you can announce that this is coming out, and they're probably going to do that with Pokemon. They have been doing that with the Amiibos, releasing them in stages, and yeah. then with halting supply to drive up the demand. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That's just a corporate thing. Yeah, but it's... it's the stage Backpass. thing is definitely already happening. Well, one thing that I think they have, there's an example of the idea you had of being able to cross over things in a very real way. Um, in the codename Steam, the 3DS game, you can actually scan in your, I think, Ike and Mark characters, because those are Intelligence yeah. Systems characters from Fire Emblem, um, and actually you get new party members that can fight alongside your people. Yeah, you so actually get them as party members. Mm-hmm. Uh, which um, that's yeah, cool, sir. I would like to see just... Mm. You're already owned by Nintendo. Just put mm. Kirby in the Mario game. Yeah. And like, I don't care if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's like it, it's just a cool feature you, if you, you have gave me the feature. Yeah. yeah. And so like for people... And it's, it's not something that the game relies on either. It's something that you can totally ignore if you don't want to have like, the stupid mm-hmm. presence of Kirby all of a sudden in here. Yeah. But for people who like that sort of thing, it's like, why not? You know? Right. With some of it, I think it's a little bit easier to incorporate, say, you know, Marth and Ike into mm. Codename Steam mm-hmm. than it is... Kirby into a Mario game, especially if it's you know Mario platformer, yeah. because then either they have to program in Kirby's moves into the Mario game and make it make sense in the levels, or he's just essentially like Mario. He controls like a Mario or a Luigi, mm-hmm. and then it doesn't really fit Kirby. So, mm. uh, but I agree with you that they should integrate them. It's just it's a little. I think it's a little more complicated than I think we're giving them credit for. I think in that case, it, yeah, it wouldn't be like you get to play as Kirby. But like Kirby is summoned and Kirby does things. I could, yeah, I could while see that. Playing. Like, yeah. yeah, like kind of like an assist. Yeah, like um, almost like a portal opens and Kirby pops out. Like, or like <laughs> the Nintendo portal. Or he shows up and like sucks in an enemy that's like right in front of you or yeah. something. It's like a little a little bonus. Just or, they're they're assist trophies basically from yeah, Smash, mm, exactly. but they're literal assist mm. trophies. Like that's what it is. So. <laughs> Let me assist. That's yeah. that's yeah. I like that. I like that. And I I did look it up by the way, just to kind of mention this. There are actually already they're rolling out the Star Wars ones, probably because they've got the uh, Star Wars movie getting close yeah. closer to release. Um, I found up some pictures. Uh, this is Princess Leia uh, looking kind of risque. I'll pass it around. Oh, There's also some Obi <laughs> Obi Wan as well. Uh, again, the art style. Honestly, this art style is not. My, I don't really like the infinity of the art style, which is why I really am not into That's it. Interesting. But um, I know some people are, and they do have a very big line of Disney characters and Marvel, and now Star Wars is being introduced. So they're definitely there. Oh, God, this this is a creepy Han Solo. <laughs> check, check this one. Creepy Han Solo. Oh. <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> not my Han. He, he has this, um, this face. It's like one of those... Um, Easter Island statues with yes. the really yeah. like, like and no eyebrows. <laughs> what I would love is we were discussing earlier wow. the, uh, the like <laughs> miscreated uh, ones, like Samus with two guns, oh, yeah. yes. um, <laughs> or one that I've seen is like Morph. And like his eyes are slightly like if that guy's eyes were slightly <laughs> off, I would buy that. It's amazing. <laughs> he would look. Oh, gosh. They make like a uh, Picasso version where it's like his <laughs> like features are just like all over the yeah, place. Yeah, he kind of melted in production. And- <laughs> he was frozen in carbonite, but it didn't quite freeze him properly when they thaw him out. Something that kind of yeah. messes with his face. Will you still love me, Leia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're not laughs> a monster. Someone who loves you, but is rethinking it. Oh. <laughs> Someone who used to love you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we um, talked about the Sega stuff, we talked about some of the Infinity Skylanders mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that in kind of like the add-on content sense, that might actually be a decent segue into the DLC topic. Okay, we can uh, talk about that some, yeah. I thought sort of, it was... Sort of. We might we might run out of time on that one, but yeah, we can talk about it for, for a little while. Sort of, uh, you know, sort of... Um, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, flash conversation on DLC real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, because I, I think, I think rapid fire. I, I think there's been yeah rapid fire. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, 
I think there have been enough people who have talked at length about DLC that we can kind of just touch on real quick. Could we make this DLC? This is like, oh, yeah, this, what? this talk about DLC is DLC. Yeah. It's been we, the we most meta out. discussion. <laughs> For an extra 99 cents. It's no, only 99 cents. It's, it's a free podcast. You couldn't do that because, you see, you'd be cutting out a piece that... It was a part of it originally, and that's offensive. Uh, you mean like, but if, like all like modern DLC, DLC right if, now? But if we stop <laughs> it and then just record ten minutes more, then it's okay. Because we, we developed that after we completed the actual game. Which I still think is BS, because you're still essentially this the same team, and you're still working on it. It's we worked on. Right. I don't know. I'm the not a fan. Hasn't I'm not well, a fan it could, of it could also DLC, be, to It be could honest. also be pitched, though, as like we had a good conversation with a couple of big topics, okay. and we wanted to have a short side conversation that we you know put in a different thing, and basically said, hey, we, we did want to include this in the thing, because it was just a little bit too long to include, but... <laughs> Not big enough for a whole podcast, so it's it, our. It wouldn't fit on the disc. Our <laughs> it wouldn't fit, yeah, on our on our web space when we tried to upload it. It was just too big. Or the just, internet was full. Or just, it, it didn't fit within our time limit even. Okay. If we have an established time limit, but right. Um, yeah, no. So I think. You know, for me, what the DLC conversation usually comes down to is there's DLC that everyone loves to hate, and then there's DLC that I think is actually worthwhile. And I think, you know, an mm-hmm. example of a studio that does it well is Gearbox um, mm-hmm. with uh, Borderlands yeah. and stuff like that, where each of their DLCs isn't necessarily a full expansion to bring up the expansion discussion we were having beforehand, Jim. And to mention that for those that might be newer, mm-hmm. um, back in, like, say, the 90s and early 2000s especially, they would make, they would release, which were essentially almost entirely new games with mm-hmm. a lot more content uh, that were considered expansions to the older games. So we, Blizzard did this a lot with mm-hmm. a lot of their products. And technically, MMOs will still do expansions. Yeah, mm-hmm. But, you know, Diablo and Diablo 2 were Would really big like on that. Shimmering Isle? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. All those, all, for MMOs, they were they still, still do right, yeah. expansions. But yeah, for, for the older games, things like Diablo, Warcraft, I don't okay. mean World of Warcraft, original right. Warcraft, Starcraft, you know, Blizzard was big into that. But other series... Um, you know, uh, there was, um, I know there was, wasn't there, there's, there was an expansion to the original Half-Life. They, they had that concept. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? It was like something like you were, you were on a beach and there was like a dog. I actually played it. I just can't remember the name of it. But there was an expansion for that. You could argue that um, Counter-Strike, was, even though it was sort of a standalone thing, but it was built off of Half-Life. And mm-hmm. Originally it was going to be an expansion. It kind of, you know, developed it into its own game. thing. Yeah. The, but, for the amount of the content that you had in a lot of expansions back when expansions were big, um, most developers now would just call those sequels. Well, they, they would not make the main game quite as long, and they basically just jump right into you know the next year's iteration instead of doing right. a massive game and then a massive expansion, and then the next sequel is like five years, ten years down the line. Like uh, Warcraft, I think is a good example. Where they had you know Warcraft one and Warcraft two and then Warcraft two's expansion, and then it was years and years before we had Warcraft three, which was a massive, massive game. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then Warcraft three's expansion was not as big, but still pretty darn big. Um, you know, if it was kind of like the modern mentality, we even actually see this to an extent with Blizzard with um, StarCraft Two, where they basically came out with a campaign as a standalone game, and then the next campaign was another standalone game, and so on. Um, if that same mentality was carried back into Warcraft Three, we might have even had just one or two campaigns that would have been Warcraft Three One, so to speak, and then Warcraft Three Two, and then Warcraft Three Three, and the expansion might have been Warcraft Three Four, um, something along those lines. So. Um, DLC, I think, um, and kind of coming back to my Gearbox point, is um, I I like the Gearbox sort of gives you not a full-on expansion sort of experience, but they give you a good, um, you know, new, entirely new gameplay. It extends the gameplay for another, you know, 10 hours or so, potentially, depending on how quickly you play through it, mm-hmm. um, to sort of give you a sort of standalone campaign that doesn't necessarily need to be part of the main story, but it's still fun to play through afterward. Right, like on a, an auxiliary experience. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think is kind of the way you want to go with right. DLC because I know that there's, for me, I get kind of annoyed when co- it does feel like companies are intentionally holding things back right. or things like, you know, they, they'll release a game and any sort of game where you have the potential to have multiple characters. They love doing, mm-hmm. um, buy, pay like, you know, an extra like, four or five dollars to get like a pack of characters or a few additional characters or yep. pay for like a new weapon or mm-hmm. pay for you know it's just it's become to the point where these these used to be unlockables in games when i would play like you couldn't just have everything at the start you would have to play through the game and get to a certain point and then you would have this weapon or you'd have this item you'd have this character and it would give you a reason to replay the game over mm-hmm. and over and over again and look for mm-hmm. new things mm-hmm. and then it became uh well let's just have them pay like a couple of bucks here and there for it mm-hmm. 
And and I think part of that also probably has to do with now people are supposed to do it for achievements, which to me, that's kind of another discussion. <laughs> achievements just feel yeah. like um, I don't really get the point of it. You're not really earning anything. It's just the game now says you've achieved something. Well, I don't need you to tell me that I've achieved something. I <laughs> already know that. It. Yeah, yeah, let me just do it. I already know it. <laughs> and it should be cool. It should feel cool for its own sake that I've done it. And if it doesn't, and it's only because you tell me that it's supposed to feel cool, then it kind of loses something. There was an interesting article I read on Gama Sutra recently where someone was basically giving his two cents on um, achievement creep, I guess you could call it, for lack of a better term, just something popped into my head, Mm -hmm. Um, which is like this idea that all these games feel like they have to include achievements, but they're all these things you're going to do anyway. They do have to include them, though. It's required, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. a lot of them do. Um, But like some of the achievements are like, you know, in a shooting game, kill 25 people, it's like... That's going to happen in the first 20 minutes of play. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that he was suggesting he thought was interesting was that essentially you're giving them variants that aren't necessarily built into game modes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, for instance, um, play through the campaign without killing anyone. Um, it's like maybe a goal they would have come up with as a player just to play for fun. Mm-hmm. But then now they've got an achievement that kind of incentivizes you to a certain degree to try it out. Um, so it's kind of like this new experience, this new way of playing that you can have based right. on that achievement. And I think, I think Fantasy Life does that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more of a tutorial experience. Like, hey, do this combo seven times mm. so that you can get this achievement. But mm-hmm. also, you're learning the combo and how to mm. press X, Y, Z buttons, whatever, mm-hmm. nope. in a certain... Fantasy life. You're going to have to explain that to me. Because <laughs> I've heard of it, but I have okay. not played it. And I haven't really read much about it. It is... It's a little handheld RPG for the 3DS. Um, I guess... You, it has the standard leveling, but you can essentially change classes at will. Oh. And you retain... I'm, I'm pretty sure you retain your skills as you change classes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics, sort of. Final Fantasy three did it to a certain yeah, extent. Kinda, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Um, but there's also... The story doesn't change regardless of what class you are. So that's, I think, what I found the appeal to mm-hmm. it. So. From what I understood, at least from the little bit that I've seen, isn't it like you're... It's more of... Like a, almost like a life sim, like kind of like a yes, harvest moon mixture. Yes, it has a mixture. lot of life sim yeah, too. Yeah, harvest moon with combat. But with yep, with combat, combat and classes. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, and a little more Rune, RPG story. Rune, Rune Factory did Rune something, factory like, that, did something yeah. like that, right? Mm-hmm. Is this now? Is this online in any way? Like you play with people or? Not? I don't know. I haven't experienced that part of it. I've oh, just okay. been isolated to my own little console. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, on achievements, I like how I like the achievements that WoW did. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of games, yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to do the things and uh, you're going to do it anyways. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter. Or uh, it just tells you that you, you did something. But in WoW, it has the unique problem where people will play, but they'll just stand around. They're not actually playing. And I think achievements in that case was, okay, well, we'll, we'll give them something to do. We'll give them uh, more goals. We'll give them things that you wouldn't do naturally. Mm-hmm. And you can you can achieve like titles through that and different small rewards. Um, and one thing uh, that I've heard people talking about is that they would like to see achievements in Hearthstone. Um, I don't know if any of you have been playing Hearthstone, but uh, there, are no, <laughs> there are no achievements in Hearthstone currently, and it kind of has that same issue where uh, there's some PvE content, and it's good, but there's not enough of it, mm-hmm. and achievements are something that sort of could buff that up, because you kind of go through it once now, and you're like, okay, I'll be doing this, done. Uh, but there's a lot of interesting uh, possibilities that can happen in it, and people, you'll see them on YouTube, but if you were taking those goals that they'd created and then incentivizing that with something, um, even if just an achievement, I mm-hmm. think that that is a good use of achievement in, in game design. I don't think... Right. Yeah, kill twenty five people. Or <laughs> yeah. every anytime I submit a game to the Google Play Store, it's like you need to add five achievements. I'm like, I don't want any achievements in this game. <laughs> you can't publish it until you add five achievements. So, and then like, like, like of, they're all hidden, and you can, can't achieve any like, of them. What was the name of the can one? Like the, the game be an achievement? <laughs> you purchase the game. Yeah, you start you start the game, unlocked. and then the achievement unlocked. You started the game. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for There's playing. There's one really wonderful game. <laughs> Flash came online, and it's uh, it's called something like achievement, uh-huh. and it's literally just there is this <laughs> list next to you, and you're stuck in like this one level. I think you're like an elephant, and it's just like random stuff. Like close this game and reopen it, and uh, <laughs> you open the game, and yeah, you get an achievement for that. And it, it was sort of a parody on the achievements, mm-hmm. but it was actually really fun to play. Mm-hmm. 
because <laughs> um, it was like a little mini quest system essentially. There was some like little because um, it was taken to the extreme. I think there's like a little indie game too that made fun of DLC in kind of the same way where you had to unlock the ability to jump and stuff like that. Like yeah. it was all in-game <laughs> currency, but it was like treated as if you're like you're buying all these different features. Right. Features, yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of them might have even been like you know get graphics or something. I, I forget, but uh, like sound is a DLC package or something. I forget exactly oh what, how it went, but it was, it was yeah. some ridiculous stuff. And then of course they're making fun of DLC. Right. So it'd be interesting. They they have it all as like a text game at first, and you have to unlock <laughs> the graphics mode. Yeah. There is a game like that. Um, I remember playing it in the pirate cart. Um, which I was like, this is a good game. It shouldn't be in the pirate cart. Uh, <laughs> not that all the games in the pirate cart are bad, but. There's a lot. I think uh, I saw a flash game like that. And it, it was essentially that you start out with text, and then it slowly moves to graphics, um, and then you get, then you kind of do that. You achieve sound, you achieve color, mm-hmm. you move through basically like a timeline of gaming. Really that, there was one that was um, that tried to do that concept that did release on different like Steam and GOG and all that. It's mm-hmm. called like I want to say like Evolve Land or something like that. And it was it was like that. It was basically you started out with. Um, low fidelity like Game Boy style graphics and you would gain color and you would it was all graphical it was like an, hmm. an action RPG, RPG. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't that good so it kind of <laughs> like gameplay wise I mean the concept was good the concept was neat yeah. but it didn't quite push it enough right with that, I mean that happens with a lot of games where you like you know you you think there's this really original and cool concept and maybe it is but you still have to kind of make it work it's all in the execution mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can we mention the Fable DLC, the, the famous uh, horse horse armor? Uh, how do you explain it? Because I, I don't, I don't oh, the, I haven't which, heard of this. Wasn't that oh, in Oblivion? No, Wait, no, Oblivion. Yeah. Oh, um, it was Oblivion okay. I was thinking, I was like, I was like Fable. Yeah, Fable. I, I always <laughs> just feel like blaming Fable for things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have a damn love you, Peter Fable. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I really enjoyed like, you know, the first couple and like things about them, but then there's mm-hmm. also some things I really didn't like about them. And, yeah. He, oh it's a I, device, I, I <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> the horse armor. and the horse armor that game that he made. Um, but yeah, the horse armor, and it was literally armor for your horse. It didn't make your horse stronger yeah. or like more resistant to dying, and it cost like twenty bucks. Wow. Yeah, and it was sort of one of those first, like, like in the first wave of DLCs, and people were like, "I don't know what this is." Oh, that's so cool! You can spend money to buy things in your game and then you're like that's not cool <laughs> it's just new yeah it's not cool and I, I wonder if that was kind of treated like they were sort of thinking of it as like a collector's item that people would maybe mm-hmm. kind of like in sort of like the tabletop mentality where it's like I could have this figurine or I could pay extra to get the super rare figurine right. but yeah. if that that'd be like okay yeah if Oblivion was multiplayer and like people would see it but it's <laughs> yeah. just really me playing with my shiny new horse and I feel like they were more like I wonder if wonder if people will buy this. Ah, let's put it out. <laughs> this is a thing we can do now. Yeah. Let's try it. I, I do tend to like DLC better when it has a mechanical influence on the game and not just mm-hmm. an aesthetic one. Mm-hmm. Um, like aesthetic DLC, if it's free, I'm totally cool with that. Mm-hmm. But or even then, if it's like you know, you pay two bucks and you get all the aesthetic upgrades. Yeah. But with like the ones where you have to pay, um, like you know, Little Big Planet, for instance, every stack boy skin is like three bucks or something like that. Yeah, really? no, 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 no. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know maybe it was price, like maybe it's like they, every three or something. They definitely forget, do charge but... you for it, and it's, it is annoying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I really don't like at all the the idea of the unlockables mm-hmm. as. DLC. I really yeah. do. I do like the concept of discovering them within the game and yeah. unlocking them for yourself. And that's really actually what angered me about Dragon Age 2. Hmm. Because day one DLC that I got with my pre-order hmm. was not something that Leighton received. And I feel like that character, to not you know release any spoilers, hmm. um, was such a huge part of endgame and overarching storyline. Hmm. Like It had a huge influence on the third. Hmm. I'm like, how could they have kept that? From all of these other players who didn't get this DLC, this character is such an integral part of the story. It's or insane. like, um, it's Sebastian. Oh, oh I was thinking. So oh, okay, yeah, Sebastian. I was, I was thinking of Mass <laughs> Effect too. Yes. Neither of us have this, but Javik. Yeah, um, I don't have them. <laughs> who, like, the whole Mass Effect universe was rolling out. Oh, there's these proteins. They died out. And why'd they die out? It was yeah. the Reapers. And then they give you a protein. Yeah. No, I right. know. Remember. I actually played Mass Effect. If, so. Okay. <laughs> you get the DLC. And, like, that's so... I agree. Yeah, that, that was the BS. story. Right? It, it is, but he's he's not necessary to the story of Mass Effect. He's not necessary to the story no. of Mass Effect. But, the, but it, if you play Mass Effect, you care about the characters and true. the relationship between the characters. Yeah. And having a protein member is kind of a big that's deal. Huge. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So withholding that through DLC, Mm. that like I don't know if it was just pre-order or if it was like a GameStop DLC or something I don't remember the idea it was was something like that it was some sort of pre-order it was ridiculous 
Which also reminds me of, I think, GameStop pre DLC. Like right. game exclusive right. items mm-hmm. for where you buy the game mm-hmm. is just right. awful. Yeah. Well think, almost always buy Walmart have some of those too, don't yeah. They? Yeah. They do not. Everything almost has, always though Target has they, they become available later to for, for purchase to everyone else. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. like Soul Calibur for a little while, like they had like um in, in four, I think it was, where they had um Darth Vader and Yoda on mm-hmm. PlayStation yeah. and mm-hmm. Xbox. Yeah. yeah. Eventually you could just buy the other one. Yeah. I think so that was was that know. four or was that? Oh no, that's right because it was two. That was the one that had like the different ones for console. Yeah, like, Link and yeah, yeah. Like Nintendo had Link and, and Hayachi. Spawn was on the Xbox, and then Spawn. yeah, Hayachi yeah. from Tekken was on the. Like the Spawn time. was the representative <laughs> for Microsoft. Yeah, but Spawn because Spawn yeah, is a cool, cool character. Cool Spawn is character. cool, but like. What? Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates Master was Chief. Bill, Bill, Gates. Bill Gates is actually a really big spot. By, by far, the, 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 the Link was the coolest. Oh, I was like, yeah. Bill I Gates should have been the character in Soul Calibur. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Bill <laughs> Gates is the character. <laughs> Who is the He's guest jumping in over five? chairs. He is. He's oh, like yeah, a pocket no, um, protector and like hits you with rulers and stuff. <laughs> five had a Ezio from Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Which is yeah. interesting. What? Yeah. It actually fit in decently well. That was pretty cool. So. I also didn't know it was Mewtwo because it was like if you bought the 3DS mm. uh, Smash yeah if you buy Smash, both versions you right Mewtwo, yeah. but mm. they will release it as paid DLC later yeah. mm-hmm. gotcha which Mewtwo was a, was apparently a really popular he was super so. yeah people were really upset <laughs> and apparently that's the only one they're playing to release as DLC which is like Smash is one of those games where I'd be totally cool with them over time releasing more roster characters mm-hmm. yeah um you know, fighting games, I think that makes sense, yeah. because uh, rather than, like, you know, there were how many versions of Street Fighter 4? Um, like, too many. <laughs> there, was like, yeah. there was, like, Super Street Fighter 4, and then, like, Ultimate Super Street Fighter 4, and then just, like, Ultimate And they just Ultimate. start adding letters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and each time they would add, like, one or two new characters, like, just do them as DLC and right. leave it Sol- or Street Fighter 4, you know? Street but, Fighter has a long history of doing that, though. They, yeah. they, they were doing that with Street Fighter 2. Yeah. They were multiple. Mm. There was, like, Tournament Edition, Championship Edition, mm. You know, so they had all these different, you know, world world editions, something like that. They had they had multiple editions from the very very start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, I guess we're getting ready to wrap up. Yeah, here. it's probably a pretty good time good. for it. All so. right. You want to take us out? Sure. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for the twenty third backward compatible podcast. Thank you to Leighton and Roe for uh, joining us today. It's been good to have you guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Very educational. I learned a lot. Awesome. <laughs> I learned I nothing. <laughs> I'll reaffirm my opinions I came in with. And you also want Sega properties to die. Yeah. <laughs> Sonic's an awful game. <laughs> Yes, long live Sonic. Um, so, I'm Chris, and for Leighton and Roe and Jim, um, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We want you to enjoy the discussion on our website, backward-compatible.com. You bring a unique perspective, and dialogue makes everyone better. Leave a comment in our podcast section, and if it's good, one of the crew members will respond to it. This time, tell us what you think of Sega's restructuring and what you think might happen to their IPs. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible.